something you might not know about the food you eat. There's an awful lot of science behind it, an awful lot. That's because it's flavor chemists like Joe Perugini in labs like this one whose job it is to make your food taste good. The Cargill Company in Cincinnati, Ohio, is one of the country's flavor labs. From the frozen dinner aisle, to the soups you eat, to chips and candy, it all starts with science. This is ethomaltol, um, a great, great flavor. You could probably pick up that it's something like uh, burnt sugar, cotton candy. This is benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde is a really cool chemical because depending on what media it's in, will depend, will tell your brain what you want to taste. If you put it in a beverage and the beverage is red and you have some acid, you will perceive that as cherry, all right? Joe Perugini, one of Cargill's senior flavor chemists, gave me a rare inside look at how flavors are made. There are many things I'm sure that are on a supermarket shelf that we make now that you use in your house. It's a business that changes with the consumer's taste buds, whether it be a diet fad, organic meals, or a specific food trend. A big trend now is the ethnic market, all right? So they want to make refried beans, but you have people who say, well, you know, I want to do that, but I want it to be vegetarian. Or, you know, I want to be health conscious about it. I don't want to use any kind of fat at all. So what we do is we, we made this large flavor. You can smell a cap, right? And it's, yeah, it's pretty nasty. It smells like fat. Or, yeah. yeah. But when you put it in like a, like, you know, a tortilla or refried beans or something like that, it comes out as if you added real lard to the product. It starts by mixing chemistry with creativity. Do you put the flavor in here? We put it in here. Okay. And basically when we put it in here, it doesn't taste like much. Uh -huh. You know, it's when we cook it that it really develops the flavor. We use amino acids, reducing sugars, uh, yeasts, HVPs, meat extracts, etc. And we put it in here and we cook it for a prescribed amount of time. And depending upon how much time, temperature, pressure is applied will depend on if you get a roast beef, a boiled beef, a barbecued beef, whatever. Joe introduced me to a team of scientists who are responsible for how your food and drinks taste. Like a customer, let's just say, ask for a I don't know, a Caribbean marinade. Okay, so the first thing I do is I research the cuisine, I gather the ingredients, and I make a real Caribbean marinade, okay? From that point, I take it from this side of my kit to my kitchen side over to my lab side, and I'll start pulling things out, uh, like uh, the chipotle flavor or a uh, jalapeno flavor, uh, taking out the real ones and putting in Joe's flavors or one of the other chemist flavors in it. And, and this, um, this is what the end product of what we do looks like. So we'll take that che uh, cheeses like these and, 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 and use enzymes to convert it into something that's more stable, more easily usable. From analytical scientists to flavor chefs, they are all part of a team. So it's kind of like detective work. You know, it's kind of like really cool detective work. This is the analytical lab and what they do here is, what they do here is they rip stuff apart for me. And we can use the mass spec to identify what those components are and the amount of it tells us how much is, is there. So we can get a, a rough formula. We can get down to parts per billion. Unfortunately for Joe, your nose gets down to parts per trillion. Once I first saw and smelled the flavor creations, I thought, I'm not tasting that. But once I did, it was delicious. For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.